This video is a little bit different than my normal videos. Of course, if you come here, you know this is a math related channel. But today we're talking about something substantially more pressing and that is the outbreak of COVID-19 or as people are calling it the coronavirus. The reason why I'm making this video is because I think it's not only relevant to discuss this virus in a mathematical context but also to modify your behavior and take action accordingly within this context. The information I'm referring to comes from an amazing article posted on medium.com and the author goes through quite substantial analysis making the case to determine in reality how many active cases of COVID-19 there are. I hope that your takeaway from this video is that the time to act is now to protect each other and ourselves. I just want to put forth a disclaimer before we get into the numbers that I am not a doctor nor am I a public health official. I'm just a person who's trying to make sense of everything that's happening within a mathematical context. The current place in the United States where the outbreak is the greatest is in the state of Washington. In order to give a realistic prediction of the actual active cases of COVID-19 in Washington, the author of this article runs through a number of statistics and facts about the virus. The first statistic that he looks at is the death rate. Now, experts have estimated that the death rate can range anywhere from one to five percent taking the conservative estimate of one percent he uses that to make further predictions the next statistic that the author hones in on is the fact that it takes 6.2 days for the active cases to double for example if there are 10 active cases in 6.2 days there will be 20 active cases in another 6.2 days 40 and in another 6.2 days, there will be 80 cases. And this is what is called exponential growth. The last important statistic is that it takes on average 17 days for a person to die from the time when they've contracted COVID-19. We can use all of these data points to get a much more accurate read on the likely amount of active cases of COVID-19 versus what is being reported. For example, if we have one reported death today, the person likely contracted the virus 17 days ago. If we use our estimate of a 1% fatality rate, that means for that one person that died, there were likely 100 active cases. We then use our doubling rate of roughly six days for the infection to double. And in the first six days, we say we've got 200 cases. The next six days, we've got 400. And the next six days, which goes a little bit past the 17 day mark, but just for the sake of approximating, for the final six days, we are now at 800 active cases for that one death. Using this math, we can approximate the number of active cases based on the most current figures, which is 42 deaths resulting from COVID-19 in Washington. We take that number of deaths, which is 42, multiply it by 800, and we get a rough estimate of 33,600 active cases in the state of Washington. Now again, this assumes that those 42 deaths happened roughly at the same time, which of course they didn't, and those deaths were staggered. But the point is, is that what is being reported is likely massively on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of active cases. What this means for us as a community is that we need to take action to curb the spread of this illness. The number one way to do that is through social distancing. The consensus of the scientific community is that the virus can be spread within two meters or roughly six feet. That means if we don't go into public spaces, we keep ourselves primarily at home and away from others, we can help slow the infection rate. This will mean a substantially reduced burden on the healthcare system and thus a lower fatality rate. Let's all do our part in protecting each other and our communities. I wish you all the best of luck over the next few weeks and please stay healthy.